Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's April 3rd. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm joined today by Dan Bingham and Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Uh, Dan, let's start with you. Uh, a, kind of a mixed performance in the market this week. Uh, feels like we're flying with a, a cloudy crystal ball when it comes to economic data. Why don't you take us through what, uh, what came out this week? Sure. Thanks, Mike. The um, market participants are really uh, striving for some uh, information and some clarity on exactly uh, the pressures of, of the economic fallout here and uh, how they're uh, uh, likely to unfold. Um, and then a lot of the economic numbers pointing back to January and February are clearly um, uh, not overly relevant in here, and people are looking for March data or m much more current data. So the couple of releases we saw this week, initial jobless claims coming in at 6.6 .6 million, um, that was up from uh, record highs during the financial crisis in the 700,000 range. Um, so the magnitude of, the, of this number is, is really telling and, and uh, reflective of the environment. Um, and most people are looking at that number and thinking uh, the worst isn't even, uh, isn't even represented in that number. Um, in this morning's release of non-farm payrolls, I would say in a typical environment, it's a number and a release that people are, are very much looking forward to um, or looking toward. Um, in this morning's release of down 700,000, um, where we typically see numbers of up 200,000, obviously a huge magnitude uh, decrease, um, probably more represented in the unemployment rate going from 3.5% to 4.4%, um, but also, you know, I emphasize in these releases that most participants feel that the, the, uh, the, even the magnitude of these numbers are not representative of where the economy is currently uh, situated. And so inside the muni market, and, and Dan or Brian, you can jump in here, what are the dynamics, how, what kind of pricing performance did you see? Yeah, great, Mike. Um, you know, in the muni market, we saw uh, going back to last week uh, after the market had rallied uh, north of 150 basis points, there was some cautious optimism last Friday that maybe our market was kind of getting back to uh, some sense of normalcy. Uh, but, you know, by midday, Monday, Tuesday morning, uh, it was pretty clear that uh, that, that wasn't uh, necessarily attainable. So, you know, we've still got a pretty good backlog of deals that need to come to the market, you know, probably north of 17 to 20 billion or so uh, that have been kind of shelved and uh, tabled day to day. Uh, I think, you know, if you went back to last Friday, most of the market was a little bit optimistic that we'd start to chew through some of that. Um, but really, you know, what ended up coming to market was uh, about 2.1 billion or so on the new issue side, which was down from 2.7 last week. Um, so, you know, we saw the market give back roughly half of that, uh, of that rally, uh, as of yesterday's close the market sold off, you know, anywhere from 22 basis points in the front end of the curve to 75 basis points, uh, from 10 years on out. And, um, you know, that, that seems to be finding some support this morning. The current MMV read, uh, is about, you know, maybe a bump of, uh, 13 to 15 basis points or so. So maybe the, uh, the initial sell-off was a little too cool. Last week's rally was a little too hot. Maybe we found uh, some some good tasting porridge in here, uh, but that's anybody's guess. Um, but you know, with all of that going on, we still saw substantial outflows from the tax exempt funds. Um, Lipper's weekly and monthly reporting number was down about uh, 4.9 billion. Definitely an improvement from the last two weeks of uh, 12 and 13 billion plus. Uh, but you know, until we start seeing uh, some more stabilization and, and some participation from the real money buyers. Um, you know, it's, it's hard for uh, it's hard for guys to really get too enthusiastic about pricing any substantial size. So, um, about 2.1 billion got placed. Um, you know, most of that on the negotiated side, about 760 or so on the competitive. Um, but uh, overall, it was a little bit of a slower week than I think most people were anticipating. So, Brian, in the in, in the new issue market, BAM uh, did significantly more volume this week than last week. What were some of the the deals, and and what what did they tell you about uh, investor interest and credit differentiation? Yeah, you know, amongst uh, all of this volatility, we're definitely seeing an uptick uh, in demand for insurance. It's it's enhancing liquidity. Uh, it's broadening the buyer base. So we did uh, about 174 million on the new, on the uh, new issue side. Um, that was highlighted by 62 million that we insured for the uh, South Shore Metro District in Colorado. DA Davidson priced that deal 
um, that had both seniors and subs. Uh, we also had a negotiated deal for uh, Starkville, Mississippi, uh, Parks and Rec, GEOs, that Raymond James price, that was about uh, $14.3 million. And then on the uh, competitive side, we saw some, some decent prints. Uh, we did a total of about $80 million across four transactions. One of those was a reverse inquiry. Uh, a dealer looking for an insurance quote for 38 million uh, Oklahoma school district bonds that mature within four years. So that's definitely something that we probably wouldn't have seen four or five weeks ago. Uh, and on top of that, um, R.W. Baird purchased a $32 million deal for the city of Wichita, Kansas, a water and sewer transaction that's double A minus underlying rating. Uh, and they used insurance on that transaction. Uh, again, with Kansas paper generally trading pretty tight, um, you know, even uh, A-rated uh, bonds historically uh, were more in the wheelhouse for insurance, but uh, but double A minus Wichita water and sewer uh, used insurance this week. So, um, you know, really good signs uh, that that insurance is is providing liquidity. Um, the enhancement is uh, is helping deals get done. And the competitive market is a place where you'd expect to see it, uh, where a dealer capital is at more of a premium. So making sure they have uh, follow through is, is, is a bigger priority. Mm -hmm. So uh, anything else to add, or we'll uh, otherwise we'll sit back and we'll wait and see how much of that backlog can come to market next week. Uh, next week does have the is the shortened trading week because of the Good Friday holiday at the end of the week. So uh, in normal times it would be a light week anyway. We'll see uh, what kind of follow through the market can generate. Thanks for your time. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. That's nice. right. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption, like the one we're experiencing right now. BAM. Build America Mutual. Ask your broker about BAM-insured municipal bonds.